Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. I hope you all are doing well. Got a pretty cool machine that we're gonna be working on today. This is what I believe, at least the date stamp on the side, is a 1973 uh, Giant Vac uh, leaf blower. This is like the walk behind, uh, has the side discharge over here, more or less for parking lots or doing uh, leaf cleanup in the fall time. These usually put out quite a bit of uh, power. This is not like the newer ones they have now that are like 13 horsepower big monsters, but I'm sure in its time this was a excellent little machine. So I believe that the engine's locked up on here. I have tried to move the fan on here and also the pull start. Uh, I've got this last year and the guy said that the last time he thought I was running was over 10 years ago so it's pretty rough y'all can see just how crusty this thing is I mean at least the choke linkage still works I did take a peek in the gas tank the lids pretty much ruined and it is pretty rusty inside I'm hoping that the tanks not gonna rot through um, I mean, worst comes to worst, I can try to repower this, but I would like to restore this and repaint it and actually use this for myself. Uh, I believe that the original front caster wheel on it was broken off and they've got something else on it. The little deflector piece it looked like it had been welded at some point and broke off. Um, paint's obviously rough shape but yeah this I think this would be a pretty sweet project as long as we can try to get this engine going and uh, get it all stripped down and repainted and uh, should be a pretty cool machine it's 50 years old so we'll try to bring it back to life let me get it in the shop and we'll get started all right well the first thing I want to do is even see <clears throat> if there's any oil in here no. Seems like it's pretty close to the appropriate level, which would just be close up to the rim on there. Uh, Alright, so I'll go ahead and start by just getting the plug popped out. Let me get a wrench for that. That plug wire's hardly even on there. Actually, there's a bunch of sawdust up here. I'm going to blow this off so we don't get it down in the cylinder. We'll give it the best chance we can. Doesn't look terrible. I mean, it's definitely crudded up, but there's no moisture. There is most definitely some yucky stuff going on. But let me get some oil down in here and we'll see if we can maybe get this thing free. Because I can't even get this thing to budge. Well, I think I've used up all of my Marvel Mystery Oil, but I've got some automatic transmission fluid here. We'll just pour a little bit down in. See if we can get this thing to to free up. He said it was running when it was parked, so we'll see. I'm going to look at the valves and see if I see anything moving. Alright, well I've been working it here for a bit. I did put a little bit more ATF and hosed it down with some PV blaster. I was working that crankshaft bolt and it seems like I'm just tightening the bolt. I don't want to put too much stress on it and break something shear off the crank bolt. So I think the next step is going to be, I think we got to take this front shroud off I believe and this top plate and see if we can get this cylinder head off from here. I'm hoping that we can get these bolts off without breaking too. So 
I'm gonna go ahead probably start soaking those down and get this cover off we should just have one two and there should be a third uh, nut right down there in that corner and then that shroud should come off just got a couple that bolt right there and a little one and then we can get this whole plate off and we'll start working on that head all right well i've got as much as i could kind of hose down with some pb blaster now this is the linkage right here that went over top just had that one bolt and that little quarter inch or I had a nut and then the quarter inch and then that came off. I guess what it does is that actually goes to your um, governor shaft on here. And I think we are good. I can go ahead and pull this cover off. Maybe. We've got definitely got some broken fins on this uh flywheel I want to know what the heck is hitting in there all right well, let's go ahead and see if I can get the cylinder head off all right well I was able to get all those cracked loose and felt like they were moving pretty free so I'm gonna go ahead and try to spin these out now see it together might have to get it with a mallet all right get y'all on the tripod so I can get this thing a little little tappy tap I think we should be good there hopefully this head gaskets uh, it's trying to hold on uh, I think it's separated Looks like this head gasket already had split. Let me see. No, oh, come on off from there. I mean, it's moving up and down just fine. Well, you guys can see here, it took me a few minutes to figure out kind of what was going on. It sounded like I had something locked up in the bottom end. Uh, I think I've discovered what it is, though. So, seems like so far our cylinder is holding fluid just fine. So I think the rings are good. And our fluid went past the valve, so hopefully those will still still seat um what i've discovered though and i don't even know if i can show you guys but let me get the flashlight here uh, let me see if i can get y'all there i don't know if you can see let me move this fan blade come on come on light work with me here I think y'all can see it there. There it is. There is a humongous mud wasp nest in the corner, like right about in here. And that's right where that fan blade is catching. It sounds like metal to metal contact, but I think it's just because it's all, uh, you know, this is direct drive to the engine and this big heavy metal casing. So everything's just kind of echoing. And it sounds terrible, but I think it's just a mud diver's nest, which would be awesome. I don't know if I want to take this whole front face off from here yet. I'm going to see if I can tip it back and knock that loose. Sometimes they'll just come off as one big chunk. And then hopefully we'll have a free engine. All right. Well, I've got this damn thing knocked loose and we are spinning. 
Valves are opening and closing. I do want to check. I can't spin that one with my thumb. Usually at least that's a half decent indication that they're closing. This thing is nasty though. Y'all can see just how sludged up. So much carbon on this. Also the, um, the cylinder head as well. It is just caked. So I'm going to start working on getting all that at least cleaned off uh, for the time being. And then I guess I can try to start, maybe I can rotate the flywheel fast enough to see if we have sparks still. If not, I can just temporarily kind of hold the cover up against it and we can test to see if we have spark. But that is awesome. I would have never thought that was a, uh, let's see if I can even get it. mud wasps and they're like hard as a brick too so it was just this huge clump up at the top there's pieces of it everywhere down there so all right let me get to clean in here and we can move ahead hopefully we got some spark seven eighths socket on my drill let's give it a whirl say we've got some nice spark there it's nice and blue awesome because this coil I don't know if I've got one like this all right well that's awesome so we can go ahead then and move forward on this carburetor all right well I've got this basically ready to pull off I had a heck of a time getting that bolt even with the handlebars out there's like two tabs that come out on the side and then we have the uh, 90 here on the frame and there is like no clearance I was able to get it with a uh, quarter inch ratchet and a 7 16 and then the top here was just these two so that one's off breather hose and then let's see what we've got here I think all we've got now is just the linkage that goes to the governor so let me see if i can get that off without it looks like it's already been bent let me grab get that off all right well i had to wrestle this thing and twist it and get it in just the right spot but i did get the linkage off from here and y'all can see this is one piece in order to get this carburetor off we just have one two three screws I'm gonna go ahead and loosen those up and then it should pull right off from here I'm just gonna leave all the linkages I think I got to take just this one loose right here and then we should be able to pull it up but I'm gonna try to leave as much as the linkage attached as I can just so it's easier to reassemble for now all right well we've got a problem the original tank that came off from here which I was worried about a hole in the side I don't know if y'all can hear. There's a big chunk rolling around in there. I thought it might have just been rust. It's not. Unfortunately, there is a cup that sits right below the carburetor. And that's basically like the carburetor bowl that's internal in this tank. Well, it has rotted off inside. And so it won't be able to basically pick up fuel from the way it needs to. I did have this other spare tank, which is a similar setup, but not quite the same. I'm going to try to make this tank work because I knew this one was still... I pulled this off a machine that was uh, running last year. Um, I think it had a rod knock, and this was in my stash of parts. So let me get going on what I got to do to transfer this, and I'll show you all how the setup's gonna be. All right, well, I think I've got it figured out where we can use the governor on here. I was able to move this governor linkage from the old one to this one. And 
it was pretty froze up too so I got it pivoting pretty freely now what I had to do because the uh, throttle plate on this does not have a hole on this side where you guys can see this one had one I want I wanted to uh, basically just figure out where all the way open was and all the way closed and mark a good point on here where this is still going to be able to travel so that's all the way one way and then all the way the other way without any kind of binding up or anything like that so I did go ahead and mark it in that spot with a sharpie I'm just gonna put a small hole through there so that we can get this linkage attached and then this linkage will come off from here on the side and will go down I'm gonna have to cut this plate off on here and then the let's see I think the rod hooks up here and then our tension spring from the governor hooks up on this side and that will just mount to the bottom of the engine so you guys can see here here's the spring and then we'll have our rod as well so I think this is gonna work fingers crossed all right well we are making good headway here um, so one of the things I did want to point out was that originally this on the handlebar this did have a, uh, a throttle on it and the way that you guys saw originally it had the uh, throttle mounted on top of the engine and I think that was because they had added a different carburetor on there and they just had to make it work the way it was so I've got the I mean this is all just rough right now but I've got the governor plate mounted back up I did have to adjust the tension spring just a little bit and make sure that everything lines up here but I'll show you guys so now we've got basically movement down on the governor which is connected to the governor on the engine it goes up to that rod and then so that's all the way so basically if my throttle cable is pushed all the way forward now we are at idle and then I'm gonna bring it back up you guys can see it's starting to open up might have to play with the tensions a little bit but I think we've got this pretty much solved hopefully we've got to throw the head back on here I am just gonna use the original head gasket just for testing purposes to see if we can get this thing to run and we'll just kind of take it from there but I'm excited I think this is it's starting to come around it's been everything on here has fought me so I did earlier try to kind of scrape this tank out some I don't know if you guys can even see down in there there's a little bit of some surface rust but I tried to blow it out and everything the best I could and there is a screen on the pickup tube on these so um, I think we'll be all right I did uh, just kind of wire wheel the plug just to clean that up a little bit so I guess we can go ahead and put that in there I don't have a way to shut this off if it does start um, other than I just have a I guess a screwdriver over here that I'll just ground it out to the uh, to the cylinder head to shut it down I'm just gonna put a little bit of fuel in here so, all right so we'll have to manually pull the choke and yeah there's no kill switch so all right I'm gonna give it a couple just pulls maybe to try to start pumping some fuel up and we are at idle all right here we go
the loper. This old dinosaur lives again. Man, I am so pumped. That is awesome. <laughs> I am so stoked. Super cool. That old lopy uh, Briggs flathead. I didn't have a, uh, <laughs> I accidentally stepped on the air filter earlier, but you guys can see. It's just basically powder at this point. How long you guys think this thing was sitting? He said that he thought at least 10 years, so who knows? Man. That is awesome. It actually sounds really good too. I kept, I guess it's kind of seemed like it was binding up. So that's full tension. And then we need to open up. So I don't know whether I just don't have quite enough tension on it or if the uh, throttle arm's a little sticky. I'm going to try to spray that and loosen it up. But it wasn't quite, it started to kind of. Yeah, see, it won't tension all the way. So I'm still going to have to work on that linkage just a little bit, but... Damn, this thing sounds good. Let's see if it'll crank right back up. No choke. thing sounds good y'all see it blow the mat right out the door definitely gonna be worth uh, restoring this this old beast super cool let me see what we can get going here with uh, hooking up a throttle and I'll show you what we got going on all right I am super pumped I'll show you all what I did here I actually got this tip a while back from uh, double wide six if y'all ever check out his channel this is just some mechanics wire, uh, 16 gauge, and I have used it in the past. You can make your own cables. I had this, I don't even know what it was off from, I think like an older Craftsman push mower, uh, but I was able to mount up one bolt through it. The other one didn't line up, and I don't want to drill new holes because this might just be temporary. I put a Z-Bend on it, locked it in ran it down I had like a little extension on it and basically it zip tied I just got it to length put a z-band there on the uh, governor so you'll see now I'm gonna move it back you guys can see got nice smooth movement there and I've just got it tied here to keep it uh, the wire as straight as possible because it does bend easy um, I don't think this is going to work out permanently, but for the time being, just to test everything out, I think this should work pretty good. So let me get you guys set up and we will take this out and see if we can blow some leaves. We should be good to go ahead and give this thing a nice little test run. I've got a fair amount of leaves over here. I'll try to at least get it up into a pile here and see how much we can move. I don't think it's going quite to max throttle. Uh, but it was kind of the best I could do right now. I'm not really sure. I may end up going back to using that plate 
uh, I did figure out how I could get that um, to work properly. That way we could have nice smooth throttle. This does work, but let's go ahead and get this thing cranked up and then I'll put you guys on the, uh, the head camera here. Let's see, you got that off. Make sure y'all can see. Say that made pretty light work of uh, making a pretty small pile, but I still don't think it's getting up to full throttle. And I need to get the the air deflector into the right spot, get that all welded up. We definitely have some work to do on this machine. Like it, like I said, get that mild restoration going. And uh, I think this thing's definitely worth saving. And, Really cool machine though. I think it would be awesome to get a new paint job on here, go through, refresh this engine, get us a nice little Briggs 5 horse, and then I'll either figure out if I wanna do the handle throttle or the uh, top of the engine throttle. But I mean, it runs excellent and um, I'm excited. It's a cool machine, so. As always, I really appreciate y'all stopping by and checking out the channel. I thought this was a really fun one. I enjoyed getting this thing back going again. Who knows how long. It could have been 20 years for all I know since it's ran. But uh, it is up and running good again. And I would love to see this thing looking like it used to when it first came off the showroom floor. So um, We got lots of projects coming up. I'm trying to bring some variety to the channel. Some old antique stuff, chainsaws, blowers, uh, a lot of the fall type stuff too. So. If you guys like this kind of content and uh, what you've seen before, then make sure to hit that thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. So on that note, let freedom ring, let the small engine sing. I'll see you all next time.